Hello, my name is uh, Lieutenant Commander Jason Kuntz from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. I work out of the Environmental Health Services branch on the Model Aquatic Health Code team, which is commonly referred to as MEC. But let's take a step back for a moment and define the problem or the issue that resulted in the need to create a Model Aquatic Health Code. People in the U.S. make more than 300 million trips a year to pools and other locations to swim, making it one of the nation's most popular sporting activities. Swimming has transformed the, from the traditional Memorial Day to Labor Day activity at the community pool to a year-round event at large, sophisticated indoor water parks and those ever-popular spray fountains which attract children, just like my daughter, like magnets. Swimming is a great American pastime and health benefits are numerous. However, some people are swimming in aquatic venues that are not safe. Unintentional drowning is the leading cause of injury death for children 1 to 14 years of age, second only to motor vehicle crashes, and more than 30,000 children under the age of 10 visit the emergency room for swimming-related issues each year. Since 1978, the annual number of recreational water-associated outbreaks has significantly increased. And public health investigations have revealed that many of these diseases can be prevented by proper maintenance, water treatment, and by updated disease prevention practices. So where does the law fit in? In the United States, there is no federal regulatory authority responsible for aquatic facilities. All pool codes are developed, reviewed, and approved by state and or local public health officials. As a result, there are no health-based standards governing the design, construction, operation and maintenance of swimming pools and other aquatic facilities. As a result, the code requirements for preventing and responding to treated recreational water associated illnesses and injuries are not always based on sound science. The Model Aquatic Health Code is a resource for local and state agencies and other stakeholders interested in adopting or revising public health laws related to the prevention of illness and injury associated with treated recreational water venues. The MAC provides sample guidelines for design, construction, operation, maintenance, and management standards. These guidelines are divided into a series of 14 different modules, each of which can be used independently or together as a comprehensive science-based tool for the review of the jurisdiction's aquatic health laws. It is important to remember that the MAC is not a law, but a set of provisions for stakeholders interested in updating their aquatic health codes. The MAC is a product of a collaborative effort among the CDC and more than 100 volunteers from across the U.S. with expertise in aquatics, health, or safety. A similar but smaller comparison is the Fecal Incident Response Protocol developed by the CDC in 2001. The CDC protocol, which is based on sound science, gained traction and was gradually adopted by all 50 states in 2006. So what are the benefits of jurisdictions incorporating evidence-based practices into their pool programs? Jurisdictions can expect to see system improvements and long-term health outcomes. Specifically, the following system improvements. Fewer pool and facility closures, more meaningful inspection and surveillance data, establish research agenda to drive future iterations of the MAC, and enhance collaboration among stakeholders, while the long-term health outcomes include, outbreaks, include reductions in outbreaks of recreational water illnesses, drowning incidents, injuries from pool chemicals and disinfection byproducts, and swimming-related emergency room visits. So voluntary adoption of the MAC will take time, as evidenced by the CDC incidents, fecal incidents response protocol. However, we have learned that science-based guidelines build momentum over time that often result in meaningful public health impact. The feasibility of voluntary adoption of the MAC is further enhanced by the stakeholder-driven process. But let's be realistic and recognize there is significant variability with how jurisdictions adopt codes, and it will take time to change, given the MAC is not a federal law. Thank you for your time. Thank you.